understanding coronary artery disease. The coronary arteries are responsible for supplying the heart with its precious fuel, oxygen. Red blood cells release oxygen into the cardiac muscle and collect carbon dioxide by passing through microscopic blood vessels known as the capillaries. Oxygen requirements vary depending on the filling of the left ventricle, on its resistance to emptying, on the strength of contractions, and on heart rate. The oxygen supply depends mainly on the quantity of red blood cells present in the blood and on the state of the vessels that transport the blood. Major pollutants such as tobacco and cholesterol can affect arterial health and cause serious diseases. We often hear about bad cholesterol, which clogs arteries, but very few people know about the vital role cholesterol plays in the human body. In fact, cholesterol is found in every cell of the body. It is essential to the integrity and proper functioning of the cell membranes, i.e., their exterior skin. It is also involved in hormone production, in defending against infection, and in the digestion of fat by bile acids. So, how can it be so important and yet have such dangerous potential? Everything depends on the balance and quantity of cholesterol in the blood. Every day, our bodies produce cholesterol in the liver. This is what we call endogenous cholesterol, since we make it ourselves. We have a natural thermostat that regulates its production. This production level is genetically determined and varies from one person to another. Exogenous cholesterol, which comes from outside the body, is ingested through our diets. It is absorbed by the intestine and directed to the liver. Cholesterol is a lipid molecule that does not dissolve in the blood. Whether eaten or produced, it needs transporters, or taxis, to be able to circulate in the blood. The good taxi, or good cholesterol, is called HDL. The bad taxi, or bad cholesterol, is called LDL. The LDL, or bad cholesterol taxi, carries cholesterol from the liver to the cells of the body. The excess cholesterol that is not used by the cells is returned to the liver by the HDL, or good cholesterol taxi. From there, the cholesterol will be transformed into bile acids, which are necessary for the digestion of fats and excreted into the gallbladder. From birth, the transportation of cholesterol leaves traces on our arterial walls. With time and age, these build up on the arterial walls and eventually form plaques. The formation of atheromatous plaques begins with the deposit of bad cholesterol on the thin inner layer of the blood vessel, the intima. It is absorbed and stored in the vessel's muscle layer, the media. The presence of cholesterol produces inflammation. The cholesterol is eaten by macrophage cells, which serve to clean the organism. They in turn fill with cholesterol and become trapped in the vessel's walls. We can picture them as large, frothy cells filled with foam. When they die, they release their contents, creating even more inflammation, and the cycle repeats. Broadly speaking, excess bad LDL cholesterol results from poor dietary habits, especially a high consumption of saturated fats, genetic predisposition, certain diseases, especially certain kidney and thyroid gland diseases. Atheromatous plaques vary in number and size depending on the quantity of excess bad LDL cholesterol in the body and on family predisposition. The bad LDL cholesterol taxis also contribute to the formation of plaques. Like the pollution caused by cars on the road, the presence of certain proteins that enter into the taxi's composition also produce inflammation. Researchers are currently interested in these proteins with a view to producing a medication that will reduce their numbers to improve health. Most of the little plaques that form in the coronary arteries over time do not affect circulation or oxygen distribution in the cardiac muscle. However, it is possible that the presence of certain plaques 
could end up deforming the vessels and even causing aneurysms. An aneurysm is characterized by an alteration in the function of the muscle layer. It becomes less resistant. The presence of this weakness in the muscle layer, combined with the pressure inside the artery, causes a deformation and a localized dilation. We can compare aneurysms to the deformation we sometimes find on a worn-out garden hose. When an artery's diameter shrinks by more than 60% due to the presence of a plaque, its ability to deliver oxygen to the heart is compromised. Angina manifests when the arteries cannot circulate enough blood in their respective areas of the heart to provide an adequate supply of oxygen. Angina, the name given to the pain caused by the lack of oxygen to the heart, is felt upon physical exertion and is quickly relieved by rest. Most commonly, angina takes the form of chest pain that radiates towards the jaw and the left arm. It can also be felt in many other ways, especially as back pain or only in the jaw or the left arm. In certain people who feel little pain, sudden breathlessness might be experienced under strain, followed by rapid relief with rest. In every case, pain between the nose and the lower thorax occurring with exertion and dissipating with rest and repeating with the same type of exertion is a serious symptom. If you experience such symptoms, you should immediately make an appointment to consult a doctor. Angina with a stable presentation of these symptoms is not usually fatal and can be treated in various ways. However, any progression in the symptoms, in intensity or frequency, or if they start to occur during rest, is a sign of instability and could lead to a heart attack. You should consult a healthcare professional promptly in this situation. No one is safe from coronary artery disease. We must be vigilant for ourselves and for the people around us and know the signs and symptoms as well as the aggravating factors. Certain factors are known to increase the risk of coronary artery disease. Some are unchangeable, like masculine sex, age, and hereditary factors. Other factors can be changed by lifestyle, such as tobacco use, cholesterol levels, sedentariness, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Prevention remains the best treatment against coronary artery diseases. To reduce the risk, it is important to lead a healthy lifestyle, especially by maintaining a balanced diet and getting regular exercise. Visit iCardio.ca to discover a wealth of information on cardiac health.